Hi everybody, it's Dave. I've got a little trick I want to show you that's in Reaper that I just discovered just recently that I think is really cool. So I want to try to make this video pretty quick, so let's get right into it. I'm basically going to show you about putting um, a sampler onto a MIDI clip. So let's get right into this. So up here I've got uh, a track here that has this particular instance of Resamplomatic. Let me just close that and reopen it for you. This is Resamplomatic. It's a sampler that comes with Reaper. And it's got a really cool feature in it where no matter where the instance of this sampler is, you can click on this button, button here that says Import Item from a Range, and it will take whatever is selected on the timeline and bring it into the sampler. So there you go. So now I have this Tiger Growl into the sampler, and I can perform it. Actually, here's the original pitch. Right? So if I play that... Now, please don't judge me on sound design here. This is more, more about um, the technique than it is uh, the trick than it is the sound design aspect. So what I'll do here now is solo this track, record a little performance, I'll get one I like. Okay, let's say that's good enough. And now what I'll do is I'll drag this entire effects chain onto the clip. So now I've, that instance of Resamplomatic is actually on this clip as a take effect. Now, what's cool about that? Well, I'm glad you asked. Here's what's cool about this, is now this instance of the sampler follows this clip no matter where you put it. So it doesn't matter what track I'm on, this will play. Just solo this. So there's my performance. That is, this MIDI clip is triggering this version of Resamplomatic, which I just performed up here on this track. Now, the great thing about Reaper, as you probably are aware, is that MIDI and audio can live on the same track, so it doesn't really matter where you put it. You can treat this like a, an audio clip. And the other cool thing about this is, let's say, I want to take this, what is this? Well, it's, it's, a, it's a metal groan. So let's, now let's put that, do the same thing with that. Now I've got this, can perform this. I'll record this as a MIDI performance. And now drag this to this clip. Now that instance of Resamplomatic is on this clip. So now this can follow on the same track as the previous one. So here's our tiger, and here's our metal groan. Now, what is super cool about this, which I've never seen before, and I've been looking for this sort of a trick for years, is we have two instances of a sampler on the same track without having to do any automation on the track itself. No, no sampler instances are on the track. These all follow the clips, and it doesn't matter where you put them. It will just follow. So basically what this means is you can be working away, find something you like. Like I say, you're working away. Here's another tiger growl here. You just say, I want to, I wish I could just perform this a couple of keys or you know do a little pitch move on it or something like that you can very quickly load this into the sampler and do a little performance including pitch wheel moves anything else you can do and there you go now another way of getting this effect onto this clip is you can drag it straight from here Okay, now remember you can have effects stacked on this clip. So you could have two or three instances of a sampler or a reverb or a chorus or a flanger or whatever else you want on here. The clip can host a whole stack of effects. So there's another tiger growl. I can follow this little metal groan we had.
And this is all on the same track. That's what's cool. And no automating of, of bypass, you know, multiple instances of a sampler that you have to bypass each one every time you want to change the sample along the track. You can have hundreds of these on the same track and never have to have one on the track itself. That's what's cool about this. Now, there are a couple of hang-ups, I suppose you'd, you could say. Um, for one, you can't audition. The reason I'm doing this um, sampler on the track up here is because you can't input MIDI on a track. Let me bring this up here where I've got my MIDI input set. And I'll turn off this rack of effects for the sampler on this track. And now, playing my MIDI keyboard, you can see that I'm triggering the MIDI keyboard here. It is not triggering inside the clip. They haven't figured out how to route live MIDI to the effect that's hosted on the clip. So that's why I'm working this way, automating it, um, recording it on the track, and then moving it from the track to the clip. So, you know, Reaper has awesome actions to go back and forth with these things. You can really make a quick workflow to get back and forth. This is what I've been doing. So let me show you a little bit of that. I always have my track up here that has the sampler on it is always track number four. So when I have my call up my actions, let's see, I have one that's, I have control K. Now what this one does is it targets this track. Let me just uh, show you the contents of it here. It targets this track that has the sampler on it, unsolos all the tracks, unmutes all the tracks, and then toggles the solo for this track, meaning it solos this track. And then it shows me the effects chain for the selected track and the slot number one. So let me just quickly show you how that looks in action. So we'll do that now. I'm going to type com uh, Control K, and boom, just like that, my instance of the sampler that's on this track opens up and I can click import item from a range and there we go. Now the other thing is, let's say you have this, uh, this particular track and you say, I really wish I, I want to edit the sample. Well, you can edit the sample that's in the, you can edit the sampler right on the MIDI clip. Now you can't audition this unless you play the, the track. But if you want to put this sampler instance back on this track, it's as easy as dragging this back to this track again. Now what we have is we have a duplicate. We have, well, not a duplicate, but we have two copies of the sampler in there. So let me just remove this first one, go up here, and now I've, I've got my, um, sampler back on this track with the same sample in it that I can then edit and modify. There's a cool um, action I have for that as well, for getting a sample back onto a track. So let me just do custom RS5K. So let's see, it's this one. Copy effects change from media, from selected media item to the sampler instance on this track. So let's open that up. So I, this one says, select this track, track four, clear the effects chain from the selected track so it removes everything that's on that track as, an, as a plug-in, copies the effects chain from the selected item, that's the MIDI item, it pastes that effects chain to the selected track, then it does the whole thing, unsolo all tracks, toggle solo for selected tracks, and then show the effects chain again. So let's, let's try that one. I'll select this track and, and run on this. And there we go. It just, it just removed the previous instance of the sampler that was on that track and replaced it with the one that was on this MIDI item. So this is a really cool feature, I think. It's been really great for me. I've, I've only been using it a couple of weeks. Uh, I tried doing this with Reaper. I think a couple of years ago, I, knew, I saw that you could put an instance of Resamplematic on a clip, but I couldn't get it to where I could play the MIDI into it, so I kind of gave up on it. And a couple of weeks ago, I was on the forums talking about this, and somebody said, uh, put it on the track and then just drag the, the effect to the clip, and boom, that, that solved everything. 
So I've been using this trick for the past couple of weeks and it has literally changed my workflow. I, I come from a Synclavier background back in the early 90s where everything we did was performance based and finally I can do that. But this is a really great tool. I hope you like it. I hope you get some use out of it and thanks. I'll see you next time.